Okay, so my name is uh, Mark Vendelaan. I'm a statistician. I uh, have been doing research uh, my whole life on the observational data analysis and so on. Uh, so the first thing I want to uh, point out, there is an, a roadmap for causal influence uh, we always follow. And it has a variety of steps. Uh, each step is uh, immensely important. Uh, one of the first step is, is really understanding what is the question of interest. So this is where you sit down with all the scientists and really nail it. And that's, uh, for that we have a formal uh, language, which are causal models, such as the structural equation models by Uday Pearl, for example, or the neyman rubin model. And so here you define your real question of interest from a causal perspective. So this involves specifying, you know, what is your outcome, what are, uh, what are your intervention nodes, uh, maybe censoring, missingness, all these things can be going on. But in particular, we are, we're talking a lot here about, uh, for example, propensity score matching. I mean, that's a particular method for a, for a very specific question, such as the uh, effect among the treated. Many times that's not a question of interest. Many times we care uh, about the impact of rules, for example, individualized treatment rules, right? Because in the real world, people don't always say always treat, right? Because if somebody comes in with a certain condition, maybe it doesn't make any sense. So again, defining the real question of interest has to do with defining your particular interventions uh, and, and what to compare with. And many times uh, that might be something like uh, how to treat a diabetes patient with a particular rule, when do you start intensifying treatment in response to certain uh, biomarkers, and so on. Then the question is, what is the observed uh, data? What do we actually have? And that might come from different sources. And how do we link this to this underlying uh, counterfactual data, which defines the causal question of interest. Now, that itself uh, is, is, of course, uh, can be done, but it typically comes down that your, your observed data can be viewed as a missing data or a sensor data structure on top of the actual desired data. Okay, now comes the real question, identification. Can we identify our causal question from the observed data distribution? Again, there's a whole field for that, a lot of experts. Uh, it does require a mathematical uh, solution. And uh, that often only works under certain assumptions. And these are just often non-testable assumptions, such as the no unmeasured confounder assumption, missing at random assumption, and so on. And then, does this thing go to the bottom, or does it only show the top? Because it doesn't show the whole slide. But. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, the next, the next one would be uh, the actual estimation, right? We have to come up with an a priori specified estimator and method of inference. Uh, that's uh, where we have been uh, uh, developing what we call targeted learning. I will talk about it in a moment. Again, this has to be a priori specified, right? This, this is a very important key to make this uh, reproducible and, and transparent. And then maybe the final step might be sensitivity analysis. So regarding the estimation, uh, there is a general approach we have developed we call targeted learning, and it's about how to estimate that part of the data distribution uh, for the purpose of actually evaluating your estimates, because now the identification result gives you this target estimate, which we have to learn from the data. Now, by necessity, this has to happen in realistic models. Right? What we often see is people refer to things like Cox exposure hazards, logistic regression, right? But that means, for example, in this propensity score uh, business, you're making immense assumptions about how the confounders affect the treatment and the outcome. And so in reality, you're really not adjusting for all the confounders. You're doing it in a very limited way. So that's why once you make realistic assumptions, which is really represents what you know, which might be something like, hey, I know treatment was only based on the following variables but you don't know the functional form. You have to address this by actually learning these relations from the data. That requires the state of the art of machine learning. That's what this whole targeted uh, learning is about, is how to utilize the state of the art of machine learning to provide formal statistical inference and the realistic assumptions. Uh, you only, only get to see half the slide here, but uh, live with that. Uh, <laughs> so what targeted learning does, it takes the causal uh, modeling uh, the state-of-the-art machine learning and the deep statistical theory all together into an uh, approach uh, which is targeted maximum like estimation combined with a super learning 
And this allows us to get more precise answers for causal questions of interest. Uh, target learning has two stages. For, for example, let's focus for simplicity on the average treatment effect. Uh, so here you have to learn how the outcome depends on the confounders and the treatment. Right? And then for every person you can figure out what its outcome would have been under treatment and under control, take the difference and average. That will be the estimate representing the average uh, treatment effect. How are you going to learn this relation between the outcome and the treatment and the, and the confounders? Now, you can throw in uh, your logistic regression, which one, right? Many times we have thousands of covariates. How are you going to do that? Right? So that's where machine learning comes in, but which machine learning algorithm? So what we can do, we can build a library of machine learning algorithms, have all your favorite choices, and just let cross-validation figure out what works best. Now, that's called ensemble learning, and we call it super learning because of the theoretical properties that it works as well as the best possible choice. Once you have done that, that's not enough because that's for the purpose of really learning this prediction function, but you really care about this particular average treatment effect, which is one little summary measure of that object. And for that, we have to do a little targeting. We have to do an extra fitting for the purpose of optimizing the mean squared error. That's called the target makes some likelihood step. That one will often utilize something like propensity score, right, depending on, on the particular estimation problem we are doing. Uh, in the super learning algorithm, we will actually also make sure there is an algorithm there which really nails it, right, under the realistic assumptions. And, and a particular algorithm we developed is called highly adaptive lasso, which is capable of, you throw any true function at it, as crazy as it is, we can do simulations, and it will learn it uh, as sample size grows at a rate which is, uh, which is pretty good. And, and uh, depending on, on, and even for high dimensions, is able to do this. So by including that in the superlearner library, we are guaranteed that whatever function happens to be the truth, the true functional relations between the outcome and the treatment and the covariates and the treatment and the covariate, it will be able to learn it as sample size increases. How, another thing which we also in the guide and which has been addressed, as mentioned by others, people say, don't use outcome data when you estimate a propensity score. Now, they, we do the opposite. We use outcome data when we learn things like the propensity score. Uh, these are methods we uh, also developed, uh, we call it collaborative target mix like estimation, more recently uh, outcome adaptive estimation uh, based on ideas of Susan Shortreed and Ashkan. And so what this does is both the variable selection as well as you know how many variables do you, so the tuning, the bias variance trade off both of them are based on the outcome, but they are done in an a priori specified way. So in this way, we make sure that uh, there's no bias by being able to play. But what's also important, when you don't pay attention to the outcomes, you might be balancing on variables which are really not that important for the outcome. Right? By just looking at the propensity score, you have no idea. So this actually takes care of that in an automated uh, way. And to just give you an idea uh, how robust these methods are these days, here's a simulation set up by Ken and Schaefer, uh, essentially to break down these type of methods, uh, kind of arguing for well, why can we not use something simple. Now here, what they do is they do set up a simulation where the treatment is a function uh, of a bunch of variables, but the only variables you get to see are these Ws, which are very complex functions. So when we apply this, these estimators we develop, these target mix like estimators, they are not able to cheat in any way, right? They don't even care what the truth is. And we are getting uh, remarkable results. Uh, and this is only competing with uh, TMLE itself, in essence, but this is much better than any kind of paramedic type approach. And uh, we do actually as well as if we would have known the propensity score. And, and so this is also why we have done simulations where we randomly sample data distributions and just can see how well these methods, which are completely blind to the truth, how well they're able to learn. And the results are remarkable. Uh, so this is uh, for people interested in learning more about it. We have a recent book uh, in particular. Uh, thanks so much. Okay, thank, thank you, Mark.